ASB fam, welcome back to the channel. It's me, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal. I hope you guys are having a beautiful day as usual. Today's video, what am I going to be showing you? Exciting, delicious carnivore meals cooked by me, created by me for my newly carnivore little sister. So if you watched my recent video before this one, I'll link it down below if you didn't, I announced that my little sister and my boyfriend, Steak and Butter Guy, will be going carnivore. So for the past two weeks now, I have been cooking every single carnivore meal for both of them and for myself. So I've been learning a lot about carnivore cooking beyond just steaks in my air fryer. So you all know what I'm eating these days, beef only, it's usually a ribeye times three. But now that I have my sister on board and steak and butter guy on board, I do have to use my creativity uh, and my cooking skills to make meals that are exciting, that are different every day, and that are, of course, delicious. So this is what I'm going to be showing you guys, a whole week, a whole meal plan for new carnivores who want to stay excited with variety and flavors. So let's get started with day one. Oh yeah, and I just wanted to show off my new carnivore t-shirt gifted to me by the amazing Janice. And she has her own YouTube channel called Confident Carnivore. Anyways, back to the video. Okay, so this is day two of cooking for Little Miss Steak and Butter. Today I'm having the other type of sausage I got her, the Teton beef sausage, Polish style. So I cut up four of those sausages and I'm just sauteing it right now. And I'm going to top it off with cheese, but instead of this shredded one, I'm gonna to top it off with this Kerrygold Dubliner natural cheese aged and Irish. I love this one, I actually tried it myself. And here I'm cooking her a side dish of my Bella style scrambled eggs. So if you guys don't know what the heck is Bella style scrambled eggs and what makes it so special, uh, I'm gonna show you right now. So the first thing that I do for my scrambled eggs is I grease the pan. Now these days my choice of fat is not butter anymore, it's actually my beef fat since I have such a surplus of it from my ribeye roast. So I just throw it in the pan and I'm literally just melting it, um, just letting that oil, that grease just coat the pan and then I'm gonna crack in the egg. So it's about time. I let it sit on the heat for about four minutes now. So let's crack in the eggs. Let me just set you guys down. Look at the way the fat crisps up. I'm actually gonna eat this. Now crack in your eggs. Right here I have four eggs for her that I'm gonna scramble up. Now, I know a lot of you guys are wondering why is she cracking the eggs directly in the pan if she's going to make scrambled eggs? This is part of my method, and I will be showing you why in one minute. Let me just crack it all in. Now, I'm gonna bring you guys to the pan so you guys can see from my point of view now. Okay, so once you have the eggs in the pan, you wanna have the heat kind of low, medium, just a little bit higher, just so that we can get the egg whites to cook first. Now, you all know that egg whites cook a lot faster than egg yolks, so this is why I'm just doing these little stirring motions only in the egg white portion to just promote them to cook a little bit faster because the whole trick in doing my scrambled eggs this way is so that we can retain the rawness of the yolk yet still have the uh, the egg whites completely cooked through. This is gonna make sure that we digest these eggs perfectly and also we get all of those nutrients that are packed within the egg yolks. So when we keep the egg yolks very raw, we also keep all the nutrients alive and intact. So I don't like to overcook my egg yolks which is why I like to make sure the egg whites cook first and fast. And you'll get to see what I do very soon to the egg yolks to turn this dish into scrambled eggs. A lot of people who have tried this, they come back to me and they report, oh my God, I can't have eggs any other way. It's just so creamy, it's so good, it's so delicious. I love it. So this is why I wanna just dedicate this video to showing you how I make these scrambled eggs. Okay, 
As you can see, the egg whites are pretty much cooked through. They're hardening and it's okay if it gets all like uh, clumpy. It's gonna get super creamy and soft the moment I break the yolks. So it's time to break the yolks. So this is literally what I do. I just start scrambling the yolks and blending the liquid creamy goodness magical yolk into my cooked egg whites. And guys, I'm telling you, making scrambled eggs this way is just, it's life-changing. If you thought egg pudding was life-changing, this is just as life-changing. And this is when you turn off the heat, guys. Turn it off completely. Because again, we want to retain that yolk rawness. The longer you have it sit in the pan, the more cooked through it's going to get. So if you like it this creamy and soupy, I recommend you take it off the heat, uh, plate it, and eat it. But do you see this consistency, guys? It's just ooey, gooey, creamy. It's almost cheesy, the consistency that this brings out. It is absolutely delicious. I'm just drooling looking at this. I obviously will not eat it because I'm on beef only still, but I'm going to really look forward to having this again. It's one of my favorite egg dishes. But let me just zoom in for you guys. You see that? Wow. It's gorgeous. Let's put this cheese on top of my sister's sausage dish now. It smells so good. Look how fun that is. Mm. It smells so good. All right, I'm gonna just let that cook. Whoa, guys. Oh my gosh. Look, this actually stretches. breakfast for my little sister. I'm going to just scramble these eggs and then sprinkle some cheese so it's very cheesy melted scrambled eggs with a side of steak bites. Crispy steak bites. Okay, moving on to the third meal I created for my little sister, cheesy chicken tenderloins. So first we're going to, again, grease my pan with some beef fat from my ribeye roast. As you can see, it's already fully greased. And I have some chicken tenderloins that I got from Costco, juicy chicken strips. And my little sister really, really loves the variety in meat that I give her. So there's beef, there's bacon, there's chicken tenderloins. So after you grease your pan with with the beef fat or whatever animal fat that you're using, butter, ghee, uh, beef fat, tallow, lard, bacon fat, it all works. Any fat, grease the pan and just line the entire pan with as many chicken tenderloins as you can fit. And I have the heat on medium high right now. I'm basically just sauteing the chicken 
in the fat and I'm gonna flip it after three minutes. Once you flip over all the chicken strips, just cook for another two, three minutes. And here's a close up of how the chicken looks. It's gorgeous and crispy. On the side, I'm cooking up three sunny side ups for my little sister. And during this whole cooking process, uh, you can be productive and you can slice up some cheese to top the chicken tenderloins with. So I'm just doing a couple of slices and I'm gonna be breaking each in half so I can line it on top of the chicken tenderloins like this. Oh my gosh. It's so cute. They look like little chicken nuggets call this the chicken parmesan but no plant toxins no tomato sauce i just put some salt just put some Kerrygold dublin or cheese on chicken tenderloin babies all righty so today for my little sister i am making her burger patties so i just have ground beef this is, uh, I think, 85.15, and I put in one egg yolk, egg yolk only. I put the egg whites over there. I'm gonna make some scrambled eggs later. And I'm gonna mix this up with my hands, really just massage it into the ground beef. Don't worry, I wash my hands really well. And I'll bring you guys back when I'm done with this. I think I'm gonna make her three juicy burgers and I'm going to top it off with a generous slice of Kerrygold cheese and I'm going to season with some salt, Mediterranean sea salt. Sprinkle a bit in, keep mixing it up. And now I am going to shape the burger patties. As you can see, Really gonna mold it in, you know? Like that. We have one. Let's do another one. I kind of just mold it in a ball first, a nice tight ball with my hands, and then I just flatten it slightly. I still want it to be nice and um, thick. I'm not making meat cookies. I want to make a juicy burger patty for her. So you see, it's pretty thick. Time to cook the patties. I have some melted beef fat in this pan already. So I'm turning the heat up to medium high and I'm just going to throw in the four patties in. After three minutes of cooking, I flip it. So three minutes each side. Here on the side, I'm cooking up some Bella style scrambled eggs. Again, it's a big hit with my little sister, also for myself. And while all of this is cooking, again, stay productive and efficient. We're gonna slice some cheese slices to top the patties with at the very end so as you can see Kerrygold slices I've noticed with my little sister if I top anything with some cheese she will immediately say it is delicious some of the meals I didn't top with cheese and she's like mm, it's kind of lacking in flavor so I definitely have learned that to really boost the flavor and taste of any carnivore meal all I have to do is top it with cheese and she automatically enjoys it more Okay, so once you have topped the burger patties with the cheese, cover it with a lid. As you can see, my makeshift lid here is another pan. Okay, so the burgers have been with this little lid and it's been on low medium for three minutes almost. So I'm just gonna check on it really quick. Oh, wow. That looks beautiful. You see? When I first put it on, it was like this whole random block that looked like it was way too big for the burger. But I really like the way it just wraps around the edges. So it's almost like a burger wrapped with cheese, not just topped with cheese. I think that makes a really cute touch. And I know my sister will appreciate the, the, the extra oomph of cheese on this burger. 